G'day everybody. Oh, that's the wrong thing I pressed. Whoops. <laughs> G'day everybody. And welcome back for some more drone construction. Let's get some daylight on the situation. So, last night and a bit of yesterday I was working on the Assertive Cargo Ships mod. I've released a test version onto the workshop which has six different ships in it and multiple variants of each including one ship that is not in the original mod. Uh, I'll leave it for you guys to figure out what ship that will be. It's intentionally rare, but should be some fun when you find it, as it's got a few nods to some things that Kapak and I have done with, within the actual ship. But what I realized was, for me to continue working on the Assertive Cargo Ships mod, I need some drones that are more difficult than these three, than the Wasp, the Mayfly and the Mosquito. I need something that can pack a bit more punch or can take a few more punches. Something that takes a bit more time for you to take it down so that it can perhaps do some damage to you or even maybe be a little more nimble. I'm thinking what I should focus on for the medium to higher difficulty drones. Unlike all of the drones that we see over here which rely on turrets. I mean, I suppose I could just use these, but I kind of wanted to create stuff that takes advantage of Lucas's stuff. So what I was thinking was something that can potentially move at close to the maximum speed, whereas these I have to speed cap to about 60, otherwise they crash into the ground a lot. Something that can move at close to the maximum speed, which should allow it to catch up to you and nail you with some things and actually do some meaningful damage. That's the idea anyway. So, I'm thinking one large lifting thruster and then trying to make the rest of it as light as possible while still giving it some sense of durability, I guess. Hey, Matcha, Nad Nadimir, Morthus, and Jackson. <laughs> That's right, Matcha, you got here right at the start. Um, so my plan this morning is... Kapak and I will be starting Halo in about an hour and a half, so I was going to see how much of a drone I could get built in that sort of time frame. Uh, since thought I'd take advantage of this time to try and get some more progress done. Ooh, I could use DLC thrusters. Do I want to, though? Might save them for something special. So I was thinking of kind of basing the design roughly around one large lifting thruster. Maybe. With probably a pair of Gatlings at the front and potentially a turret somewhere on it so that it can fire in multiple directions and actually give itself some extra firepower, I guess. Um, if I'm going to do that with a turret, I'm going to need to make sure I make it big enough. So maybe a pair of... Oh, hold up. What if I do a pair of thrusters? Uh... So, what I'm struggling with here is I really like how small and compact these drones are. I really like that they're kind of not the enormous ones that we had to make in the past. So I want to see if I can keep with that while making it a bit tougher. How do though? <laughs> how am I going to manage that? Uh, let's just start mapping something rough out. Okay, what sort of shape should I go for? That's probably a better place to start. As you can tell, did not think this through fully. I just went, I know what I want to do. I want to build a drone, but I don't know how I want to build it. Um. Oh, actually, I have a better idea. I'm going to give this a big forward thruster. <laughs> That'll be kind of sitting on top.
Yeah. Do that, and then do plenty of small lifting thrusters. So this thing has crazy acceleration. Um, I'll need to obviously add a decent number of braking thrusters. Uh, I don't know if I'm sticking with the bug theme. Um, for the medium and heavier ones, I guess I could change theme depending on how it ends up how it ends up looking. Uh, let's put some basic systems in. <laughs> Who needs brakes? Exactly. I'm sure not having brakes has never harmed Capac. Um, so I'm going to need to make sure I have a lot of lifting thrust here. Oops, went too far. Breaks of Aquitas. Yes, that is true. Uh, I think. Uh, that height's probably going to make more sense. Oops. So I'll start with eight lifting thrusters. And then I'm going to think about how I want the guns to be mounted. Oh my guns. It's all turrets. There we go. <laughs> Just stick a warhead on front, they slow down real quick that way. Uh, that is an option. I don't know how good Lucas's uh, ramming behavior is on planets yet. But I, I kind of like that idea for a drone in the future. To have a, an atmospheric kamikaze drone. Start with the twin and then I probably will end up with enough space underneath. If I move those, t those thrusters out I could put a turret under. I don't have a kamikaze drone as yet. I'm not against the concept though. Okay, that'll create enough room. Then I can put not a missile turret, Gatling. Yeah, I think I think having the twin forward guns and then the Gatling turret underneath this thing should be able to uh, do a fair bit more than what the rest of them have been able to do. And plenty of braking thrust. Do you have a kamikaze drone? I wasn't talking about Kapak, by the way. <laughs> uh, he is a rather effective kamikaze drone. Now, I just need some lateral thrust. And then a couple of downwards, and it'll be good for this. I'm going to need to, um, I guess, test this thing out. Three each way? Probably four. I might even... I might, like, as I've got... As I continue laying this out, I may change stuff. Uh, this is just to get a rough idea of what might be required to get this to be as nimble as I want it, despite it being quite large. Yeah, I think that looks better with the scoop that way, and a little bit further back. So 
So the other thing I was thinking with uh, the more difficult cargo ships and the reason I'm not too worried about this being too heavy is I can spawn this one and one of those every time one of these spawns. So this will never spawn on its own. So uh, for the more difficult cargo ships, you're going to be facing more drones, which I've been thinking about recently is one of the reasons Survival Unlikely's current series is the only, is the last time I'm going to play with shields on mobile grids. Because having shields kind of defeats a lot of combat. Like, makes combat way too easy. Or at least not dramatic enough for me, for my taste. Uh, so, I've already told Capac that the next the next series we make, whenever that may be, uh, we're not going to have shields. So our combat is going to be a lot more interesting because we'll have to actually handle the extra drones coming in from different directions. So we'd probably want to go in with two, two fighters, one of us to take out the drones and one of them to go in against the cargo ship. Um, because all of these cargo ships, they run away. And they do so rather quickly. So there's things like that that make them even more effective. And more difficult to pirate. Uh, yeah, the, as Eisen said, the DLC parts, It's a, I don't exactly know why Keen are okay with this, but it's probably because they use it in their own uh, pirate bases and stuff. I can use DLC parts in my mod. They will spawn for you happily even if you don't have the DLC. But if you ground down one of the DLC cockpits and then try to weld it up, you won't be able to. So piracy will be slightly more difficult for you. Um, so it there are downsides to it, but I kind of feel okay using the stuff because if it's going to make things look better, I'm going to do it, which should surprise nobody. Let's get an antenna in there, and then let's disconnect. Right. Let's see how this thing handles. Maxed out on power there. Hmm. This isn't too bad. Ah, yes. Hey, Lucas. <laughs> How's it going, mate? Uh, I was kind of hoping you'd be here to criticize my drone and hopefully make it more effective because this is what will hopefully be one of the heavier drones that spawns with one of the more with the more difficult cargo ships I feel like that's probably enough braking force the thing that's I guess I need to test is this go down slows down fairly quickly. I can't call it the horsefly, Eisen, because Lucas has got the horsefly. Uh, yeah, Bashir. <laughs> Making brand new players play with assertive mods is probably a bit cruel. <laughs> Yeah, I, w I would not inflict this upon new players. I mean, I did inflict them on Capac, but still. He was... he'd at least played creative mode. Oh, cool. So... Won't need the... these thrusters 
to work for drones. That's impressive. Um, what, hey, Lucas, what would be a quick way for me to test to see... Oh, I should just add it to a spawn group and then just spawn it, shouldn't I? And give it the behavior. That's what I'll do. Never mind. I know what I need to do. Um, before I go and greeble this thing, I'm going to name it and spawn it. So, large ACS. Wait. NPC ACS large combat drone test. Alright. Control B. Let's export it. And I will add it quickly to my test mod. Share. Uh, don't need that window. This one. Uh, atmospheric drones. Let's move you over to there. Let's bring my spawn groups. That is not the one I want. That's the one I want. Uh, so, where are my drones at? There we go. Now I just need to name it correctly. So I'll just leave it using the exact same uh, piloting as the other drones do and just see how it goes with that. It's likely I'll have an update going to the Unstable Branch tonight or tomorrow that has the new item pilot and I want to make sure all the existing drones work well with it. They should, but still. Okay, so I'll have to test them. What What things do you think might be an issue with the new autopilot, Lucas? If any, if there are any that you're predicting might be an issue. Uh, here we go. Oh wait, did I just... <sighs> I messed that up. I need that to be true. <sighs> Fuel critical. Uh, quick load, because I changed the mod mid-load, so it might be broken. So I was thinking about the um, whole weather update to Space Engineers. I feel like I'm going to have to redo my beginner tutorials. Fuel critical. Because that lightning thing is just way too cruel for new players. Speaking of the assertive cargo ships being cruel for new players because I kind of want to do the redo the thing and say by the way you probably don't want to have any of the weather things active when you first start playing okay friendo Come get me. Seems to be holding up okay so far. <laughs> yeah, Lucas, um, everything will be struck down by lightning unless you've got a decoy or an antenna block on it. 
And if you have a decoy or antenna block on it, they'll get struck first. And if it's a small drone, they'll get shot out of the sky. This seems to be holding up okay. Spawn a few of them. Move around a bit. Uh, let's get a chumper. Oh no, wait. I'll use this truck. Because I like this truck. No! No! Dang game, freezing up. cockpit. <laughs> Dang. Okay, these things are doing a slightly better job of hitting me than the um, mayflies do. Natamir, I am testing. <laughs> this is how we test. i got to see that the drones don't smack into the ground. That's what I'm worried about. Because while they're trying to chase a moving target, they're more likely to overshoot and die. So I'm trying to give them a chance of crashing. They're holding up really well. In fact, they're holding up better than the little ones, which is perfect. Of course, I hit the one tree. <laughs> oh. Yeah, as and I think I think the turrets are making an impact here, which is perfect. That's what I wanted them for. Working really nicely, though. Oh, yeah, I need to add the um, bullet trail mod to this save so that I can follow the tracer fire better. Oh, that's a bit rough. I feel like this has mostly been an adequate test. <laughs> Drones have performed admirably. I haven't shot each other yet, miraculously. Okay, cool. That is reassuring, and it is reassuring that Lucas said if they were going to crash, they would have by now. Da, 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 da. Cool, now I get to Greeble. Yay! <sighs> ouch, Dragnon, ouch. <sighs> the irony of that comment is my friendly fire in seven days is just more deadly. It's not more frequent than anyone else's.
<laughs> yeah, Jake says, my end was tied to my bad driving as usual. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think if I can work out a way to squeeze an extra lifting, extra pair of lifting thrusters in, I will. Uh, but otherwise, this is... I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, we'll have to see how it holds up once I've greebled it, because obviously that's going to add a fair bit of mass. <laughs> yeah, Eisen, you get a headshot, you get a headshot, everyone gets a headshot! And I might have just woken up Capac, whoops. Probably shouldn't have yelled that so loud. <laughs> My bad. I need that to go out further. Oh. Style. What style am I going to go for here? Mm -hmm. I think something like that down the centre is a solid place to start. Poor Kapak. Stays up so late that he makes it really easy for me to accidentally wake him up in the morning. Actually, he sleeps through anything. You don't have to worry about Kapak. Batman has slept through conversations we've had. I swear I wasn't even that boring at the time. Uh, yeah, it's 10 to 9 in the morning. But Kapak, if... Okay, if Kapak and I weren't streaming today, Kapak would probably not get up until about 2 o'clock this afternoon. And I'm not even slightly joking on that. Whereas, here I am, <laughs> having been up since 6.30 this morning. Because that's just when I wake up. I've always been a bit like that. I think it all started back when I used to get up super early in the morning. So that I could watch morning cartoons before my parents had stopped me watching TV. Because they'd still be asleep. I kind of like having the gyros a little bit exposed there. I was thinking for a second I might move them under here. But maybe I could move those thrusters. Or even put in more. Oh no, wait. I'll put a pair of thrusters there and then I'll put one centered. Yeah. I think that'll give me more options for the greeble. Yeah, Jenkins, I've skipped over during editing, but I haven't fallen asleep during it. Kapak's been staring at me, and then I just see him go, uh, and he's... <laughs> he falls asleep mid-conversation. I swear I'm not that boring. put there instead. Oh, right. Um, need access for ammo. So can't put those blocks over there. Speaking of ammo, let's give it some ammo. 
Which one of these? That one. <laughs> You're not boring, you just have a calm, soothing voice. <laughs> that sounds like such a euphemism. <laughs> uh, uh, You're not boring. I had a conversation with a friend once who fell asleep during it, holding up a hand as if trying to make a point. <laughs> right. Yep, that that's kind of the picture I... The, kind of the same thing happened to me, Nat. Okay, Dougie. What to do next? How to make this work? Um, I feel like maybe the thruster needs to be... It needs to have some sort of fin sort of thing on it, but I, I hate doing those things as a single block in Space Engineers because it always seems to be way too chunky. If I just do that. So that can be enough. Hmm. I was expecting it. Cool. I'll see if I hate that by the end of it because I might do. Oh, <laughs> having said what I just said, I don't take offense to people who use survival impossible and survival maybe to aid their sleep. Because apparently the, I think it's the more constant nature of my speech. Like when I've edited myself, I tend to try and improve the flow so that any pauses I have while I'm thinking of words, I try and cut out so that my, com my sentences flow better. And I don't tend to get excited unless there's a reason to be excited. So I, I don't take offense to that. <laughs> I take offense to Capac falling asleep mid conversation, though. Ugh. Which I think is fair enough. Me taking offense, not him falling asleep. Yeah, it is kind of looking a bit fishy, isn't it? Uh, certainly give you that. I think it's a bit too stumpy. I think I will have to bring those thrusters back in. Just trying to work out what to do at the back here. Because right now I am not a fan of the design. What I might do is get rid of those and put them in along the side here instead. So that'll give me the extra power while not having this flat surface to deal with at the back. I can do something different. Oh, 
that's not a good look. At all. Or a couple of my... Yeah, I do. I've. There's six small batteries and two large batteries on it. Oh, thanks, Biscuit. Yeah. I think I might just leave that as is. I just go, meh. If I spend too much time playing around with these things, sometimes I feel like I make them worse, not better. Now, let's bring these thrusters back in because I don't want them all that way up. Oh, what did I just remove? Oh, thanks, Scalabion. Very kind of you, sir. Has, um... Has the recent update messed with any of... your mods? Like, daily needs and that sort of stuff? Try to read chat and failing. Alright, what am I going to do with these thrusters to make them supported but not super chunky? I'm just going to have a look and see what the small sci fi ones look like. Oh, they're not different enough to matter, I think. Not for this use, anyway. <laughs> oh, nice. Good to hear you haven't had any big problems. Uh, right, so... Let's go with what I was originally thinking with this design, which was something vaguely winged, which is why I put these out on pylons of sorts. I may drop them. I think that might be my issue. I think I don't like them being that high. I think if I get rid of them now, and then get rid of this thing, I can then do this. I could even do this. Uh, yeah, that's better. A bit more compact. Uh, I'm also going to... Even though this is going to make this drone quite valuable parts-wise, I think with the amount of damage it might be able to do. Yeah, Captain Cranky, I like to build my drones with inherent points of failure, like deliberate points of failure. But maybe what I could do um, with the reverse thrust failure. I mean the forward thrust though. For point of failure, I could do this. So that it's not completely taken out if you hit the big thruster, but I do like to have something that allows the player to target a specific block to try and take it out and, and mean that they've got something to aim for. Uh, but maybe I put one thruster in here. Because I think that helps with the shape there anyway. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, well, Dragnon, this is kind of a rear-facing chase gun, because this turret can point backwards. So, I don't know that Lucas's drones can use rear-mounted fixed weapons? I don't think so, anyway. But Lucas is, was here, so he might be able to correct me. Loud ambient noise on your end, Lucas. Is, is that a comment about someone making too much noise around you, or is that just life in general? Um, I was just saying that I don't think you, I don't think the drones can have fixed rear mount, like rear facing weapons that are actually usable. Oh, they can. Huh. Well, isn't that interesting? <laughs> there might there might be a small reason why I try and do these um, module encounters, like assertive cargo ship style streams at times when Lucas can actually be online. Because uh, it does increase the chance that I can get those sorts of pointers right from the outset. And corrections. Yeah. I'm actually kind of happy with how this turned out. It's chunky, which is fine, because so are these. They're stumpy little things. Especially these two. <laughs> so rear racing rocket launcher instead of the small thruster. Uh, maybe I don't. I don't really think you get that many opportunities to chase a drone. Isn't deliberately building them in ways that makes them easy to destroy or to some defeat the point of having them in the first place? Uh no. So. B-Lord, one of the things that you have to be mindful of when you're designing stuff to for the player to fight is that it is possible to make stuff so difficult to take on that the player just won't. They won't engage. And there's no fun gameplay in something that people don't choose to engage with. You have to make stuff have flaws, in especially to have graduated difficulty levels. You don't want to have something that's so hard... Like, if I had every single drone spawn like this thing, and I had this covered in turrets so that there was no safe approach, that there's nothing you can do about it, where's the fun? There's actually no fun in that. Um, it's a terrible way to design an NPC opponent. So what you need to do is try and think of ways to have fun solutions to problems. You need to have ways to engineer your way around it. You need to have things you can do to defeat them if you play and ideally have different ways to defeat different targets. Um, for me, these little drones are a perfect sort of target for early players. They're reasonably nimble. They've got one or two Gatling guns. They don't, because they do strafing runs, they don't just smash you with bullets from perfect um, distance. They're also small enough that rifle fire, at least with vanilla settings for armor 
durability, rifle fire should have a chance at taking these down. You'll still want to have heavy caliber to improve your chances, but rifle fire sh may well be enough to save you. And that's intentional because these are the sorts of things you place play against when you're early in the game. And then as your threat score goes up, you'll start facing things like this that have turrets that make it even harder for you to avoid the fire. They're heavier, they're more durable, more durable, so you'll have to shoot them for longer. And there'll be more of them. So I always aim for fun, not hard. I know that seems counterintuitive when I have a series called Survival Impossible, for, but for me, the challenges that I built into Survival Impossible are fun. Making it so that I have to do things like mine out all of the boulders because I can't find underground iron, that I have to go up to an asteroid to get access to proper deposits of iron, that's fun to me because I had to engineer my way around it. I had to come up with clever ways to deal with those issues. Um, same with my ridiculously fast oxygen consumption. That was deliberate because then I have to have vents on my vehicles. I have to have other ways of getting oxygen as I go around. So, And I thought through some of the solutions before I even put that challenge in the game because I was like, this is going to be a fun solution to do. This is going to be a fun thing to build. Well, Trilby, it's I completely disagree that it's clickbaity because... If you have a look at the thumbnails, the M bit of the impossible is right in the crosshairs. And also, I thought I was going to die in the first episode. I don't know how I haven't yet. Uh, Floody, I have not recorded the next episode of Survival Impossible, so it may not be impacted if they fix it before I record it. Maybe. Anyone got an idea of a name for this thing? <laughs> yeah, I survived the first episode by eating snow for an hour. <laughs> That's so true. Raptor, Moosefly, Junebug, Hornet. Hornet. I kind of like Hornet. Clownfish? You want me to call it Nemo? Piranha. Capex treasure chest, watch him be drawn to it like a magnet. Cicada, dune duster, bull shark, killer bee. <laughs> Great, we have Killing Nemo as a stream. <laughs> uh. Yep, Hornet it is, I think. I do like some of those other names, but I'm not a fan of um, doing joke names that are going to be seen a lot. Like um, the rotary airlock door mod. It bugs me that that good AI is watching you thing is on the door. I liked the joke when it first was done, but it's just it's gotten a bit old now. I wish the mod author would get rid of it. <laughs> That's... I know some other people love it though, so personal preference, I guess, on that. Uh, I think that might be enough blue for this. Large thruster blue. I'll have a look. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, it's a bit much blue. 
That's what I could do though. Just for something a little bit different. Once the paint menu decides to load. Yeah, man. Uh, let's do that. I'm just going to see. There's probably a situation or two where I could use these neon this neon stuff to add to the drones. It's not about accuracy, Bilbo. It's about the fact that all of the drones have this colour scheme. At least for now. Whoops. I reckon I could add some neon to these things. Don't know if I will, but I reckon I could. Like, if I went neon instead of the blue? Could be an interesting way of doing the drones up. I really should just use the spray paint tool. Like, I reckon that kind of looks cool. It's a more subtle addition of blue and extra things. <laughs> yeah, I may well repaint more of them now that I've got this. Yeah, I'm gonna... You know what? Stop it. I'm, a, I'm actually gonna repaint these other ones. Let's have a look. Let's see how the mosquito looks with the neon instead of the blue. Because I actually do think it will work. Why is my paint tool? It does make the whole thing a lot darker, but it kind of works. Huh. I wonder if the neon colorable surface would look better. No. Also, why isn't that painting? No, oh, for some reason painting at the moment causes massive slowdowns in the game. Much better with just the lights. How do they look at night? That's a good question. Yeah. I like it. Oh, you gotta do the battery. Oh, the battery doesn't have much on it. Sad face. That's unfortunate. Oh, well, now let's do this one. definitely like it for the fact that at night you're going to be able to see the drones a bit more easily because of the uh, emissive strips. Ooh, that one looks cool. 
I think the angled pieces look great because they've all got this really simple pattern that repeats. And it means you definitely get it kind of moving the right way. <laughs> Have you considered for the early drones to colour the vulnerable bro blocks brightly as Hey Noob shoot here? Uh, if we had accurate enough weapons, I probably would consider doing that. But uh, given everything in Space Engineers is spray and pray, uh, I think I'll just leave them be as is. Now, with having this patterning, I think I could possibly add a bit more to this one. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm actually loving this. I don't think there is any way to affect the orientation of the textures on blocks, which is sad. Uh, cool, let's copy you and move you up here because you are finalised. I'll need to test you though. Yeah, I so prefer this over the standard blue. For the drones. I don't, I don't think I'll do it on bases, but for the drones, I really like the look of the neon. It gives it a nice extra bit of flair. Uh, I might do it on, like, in terms of the large grid ships. I would potentially do it on the jumping spider because it's kind of intended to be a drone but to make this ship work with Lucas's like autopilot I may have to do some modifications to it because it is a s super heavy ship uh, relatively nimble for its size but it is super heavy How does the Hornet compare to some of the size-wise to some of these other ships? I think it's about the same size as the fleeting rival. Yeah. He's very similar to the fleeting rival. And that's kind of as big as I want to go. I want to keep the drones fairly small for this version. See a few people are talking about Empyreon in chat. Empyreon is a great survival game and it's got some cool things like you can paint block faces and all that sort of stuff. It's building complexity as in terms of engineering and support is probably less than seven days to die. Um, and I usually have fun playing Empyreon up until the point that I remember that I can paste in whole ships ready built and they're better than anything I've ever built because you can get stuff off the workshop that people have spent ages on in creative mode and that's all you have to do because I like building I like designing and I always find that having an option like that available to me it takes some of the fun out of the design alright info Change this to Hornet. Okay. Now, what are you currently called? Yeah, you're the... Serve Installations version. I need to rename you.
Uh, the AI does not work with ground vehicles. So I have not done ground vehicles for anything. I think you can make it sort of work, but it's... It's not something that Lucas intended to include last I heard him talk about. So, it's not something I intend to either. And there we go. I'll rename this. I'm not sure if there's much advantage to me having duplicated the drones and have different versions for a set of installations versus cargo ships but I think it might be somewhat useful later like if you're looking through your entity list and you know whether it came from a set of installations or a set of cargo ships the stuff that's there <laughs> yeah Lucas that's always your line I can't drive well without AI as it is so trying to make an AI that can drive well it's not going to happen so I think it's fair enough. I am also, with the rival AI additions of a set of cargo ships and a set of installations, I am naming all the grids so those of you who manage servers will be grateful because the grids are going to be much easier to clean up. And we'll have a consistent naming scheme. the trans uh the transport rovers in escape from mars have a lot of scripting and they that sort of drone you can make work uh, i know some of the guys that make um stuff for modular encounters have done so but it's it's not easy yeah more npc en encounters that's the one. Uh, let's export. Okay. They're exported. Let's get them into the thing. Get rid of the test drone. Ah, oh, no. I named them all drone. I'm gonna have to go and rename everything. Dang it. I think I know why I did that as well. Because I had some ships, some cargo ships that had different, that had similar names. So I had some logic behind it. So I'll get rid of the old ones. And then I'll add drone. Uh, no, I cannot turn on a lighting storm because I turned it off for these saves deliberately because it does the weather is broken at the moment. Uh, no, I'm going to have to do all of this for all of them. But I could leave the subtype ID the same even if the grid isn't. I won't though. I'll do it properly. So once I realized that some people had made their cargo ships named Wasp and things like that, I was like, oh, I should probably differentiate between the cargo ship and the drone. Uh, this is it. 
And where have we got our spawns? Whoops. Drawing. The other thing I was finding was that the audio was getting messed up with the weather. Oh, that's not what I want. That one's fixed. Okay, they're all good. Let's give this a go. Oh, I'm not having a go at keen over it. it. It's unfortunate that the weather seemed to work and then just totally doesn't. Um. I like the idea of the weather, but it's the execution with the sound, particularly, like the rain sound, um, even when it was still just Jakaria's mod, was something I was like, eh. The sound is quite overwhelming. But, for those of you that use my sneaky sounds mod that Roman kind of made, um, he really did make it. He made all the scripts and I just set up the profile. Uh, I've added all of the weather sounds to sneaky sounds so that they are quieter. So for those of you who want to um, have weather active but not have the rain drown out anything you're doing. I reduced... I reduced the level for them down to, I think, a bit less than half. Fuel what the? Critical. No. Well, that's not fair. Okay. Slash MES dot spawn my ship. Uh, I want. Let's go. Spawning another one. Oh! Because this world's probably limited to just having one cargo ship active. That's probably why. Come on, Hornet. You meant to shoot at me. Oh, yep. That's shooting. Ooh! See that strafing run? Hang on. Let's... Add some more obvious bullets. Definitely need bullet trail. Edit settings. Mods. And then we wait while my mods list loads. Du, 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 du. Nope. Space Engineers crashes. Fantastic. Oh, my mod list is stupid. I even culled them. But there are so many that I need for light echoes that I can't get rid of. Uh, 
It's like, eh. Edit settings. Mods. Please don't crash this time. Oh yeah, don't go shopping at Climbs Workshop if you want to keep your mod list small. There are so many things there that are fun. Yeah, I need to do some cleanup of my mods, my blueprints, my save games, all that sort of stuff. But every time I get a bit of time, I'm like, I should do work on assertive cargo ships, or I should do this. And I never think, I should clean up my save folder, because it's boring. <laughs> There we go. Oh. This is what I've said numerous times about Lucas's drones with rival AI. The fact that you can drive around and not get destroyed is awesome. Uh, no, Grazub, I, I could not do that. Not the least because I would have to publish it because Capac and I both need to have it. For like a combined mod and I would it'd be next to impossible to get the permission from all those authors Capac doing being an administrative assistant uh, I don't think so <laughs> I think you've got the personalities of uh, myself and Capac mixed up there starving zombies <laughs> Uh, okay, Lucas, since you're here, let's see what we can do here. Uh, I want to do a custom behavior profile for the heavier drone. So it would be medium atmo drone behavior. Medium. And this one, I suppose, could have predictive like you just mentioned. Uh, maybe I'll get this to go a bit faster. Now, Capex filing system is, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. All right, let's go to Lucas's Discord so I can go and get the link the quickest way that I know how. And that. What's your encounters? What I want. Uh, is it behavior specific tags, Lucas, that I'm looking for? Or do I want to go horsefly for this? Would horsefly be a better behavior? Core system tags. Oh, horsefly can't use static weapons. Okay. Uh, I don't think it is core system tags, Lucas. Target profiles? Time until acquisition, use target refresh. 
max distance filters get target by action targets uh I am uh, not finding the target prediction tag. Is it not in this yet? Because I reckon that'll be interesting to see. <laughs> well, if you, if you, um, I'm happy to, like, what would I need to add to the behavior profile? I uh, gotta love stream lag for this. <laughs> this sort of conversation over stream lag is always a bit slow. Uh, okay, I'll just keep driving around and. Actually, did anyone notice anything in there that could be interesting? This tag specifies your behavior. Use default. Okay. Horse fighter. Hmm. This tag specifies the distance from the target the NPC must be within before it will switch to its rotate and strafe mode. Ah. Use projectile lead prediction true. Okay, and spawn groups. Let's quick load. I'll have to try. I'll have to play around with the horse fighter thing. I've I've been kind of lazy with exploring all of your extra options because <laughs> I've been trying when I get time to mess around with this to uh, focus on other things first, like just focus on getting the mod up and running. A little bit of both, dragging on. A little bit of both. Alright, in it comes. Let's see how it does this time. Swooping round. Might be going a little too quick. <laughs> I'm supposed to be testing this, not trying to avoid it getting hit. See ya, 900. Yeah, Survival Impossible would be rather unpleasant with the current nerf to ship drills. Oh, keeping it just behind me. Ah! Okay. 
Yeah, it hit me that time. I think it's doing a slightly better job of uh, targeting me, Lucas. It still struggles with me being on the ground, though. But that's fine. I'm, I'm quite okay with this. It is, it's, it's almost like the drone saying, dance, dance, Splitsy, dance. <laughs> Should have called it the Stormtrooper with that sort of aiming. Uh, the belly turrets seem to only start targeting once I got out. I wonder if it's just set to target players. Huh. Might have to check that. It, it could just be set to target players, which would be unfortunate. Well, I'm excited because this, with the addition of this drone, I can start doing the... I can continue doing with uh, more of the heavier atmospheric cargo ships that I got up to. Uh, let's check the turret, see why it isn't shooting. First off, idle movement off. Did these target small ships? Lucas, did... could you... do you have any theories as to why the turret wouldn't have been shooting? Maybe target neutrals. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Turn character targeting off for the turrets. So that... Hmm. I'll think about that one. I'm not sure whether I would like that. Um, I guess we'll... I guess it is working. Yeah, as in, like... So that... These guns can kill you, but... This turret can't if you're stuck in your suit. But I think if this is spawning... You've attacked something big. Because... The way I'm going to do stuff with the harder cargo ships is if you get close to them as in if you get within a couple of kilometers of them they'll spawn these more basic drones as defense it's only once you get within say a kilometer of it which is definitely you are being aggressive then it'll send this after you so if you're in your suit you should get taken out so I think um I think I, I think I'll leave it so that it can kill you. But my idea with the rival AI version of assertive cargo ships is to n to have less of that 
a cargo ship flies over your base and so a drone decides to attack you sort of stuff that I've had in Survival Impossible because as nice as it's been to have those rare attacks they don't make a lot of sense what I was thinking instead I would do was make a ver like make an extra spawn group for these drones so make them a regular cargo ship but a rare to spawn one so every now and then a drone will just come and hunt you down Yeah, being aggressive, the cargo ship trying to land on my base, which it works. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's kind of my idea behind how to make those random attacks happen, but not happen just when a ship flies over the top. And to try and make them rare rather than constant. Because I, I want to move away from the constant, overwhelming, ridiculous sort of stuff that Assertive Installations was when I first made it, and kind of still is, where you just have that relentless assault. Because uh, I feel like, one, it just ends up with a whole bunch of rubbish on the ground, which is kind of not great. And two, it just, it never felt right for me. It was, it was never what I intended the mod to be. I wanted it to be difficult, and that was the only way I had, the only means I had to make it difficult at the time. But now I've got some other techniques. It should be fun as well. Probably make that match the blue, shouldn't I? That's not how you spell light. Well enough. Let's see how that look at looks at night. Yeah, just makes them a bitty like. I think it's just kind of nice having them lit up. They look really cool at night. Get the thing across. Oh no, did I? Oh, I closed it. Prefabs, drones, on a drone, place. And I need to get rid of that as well. <laughs> now Splitzy will get distracted during night raids and get shot up. Uh, it's possible. Uh, no, Wraith, I won't put strobes on them or spotlights. The reason being performance and the number of point lights you can get away with before they start flickering. So, meh. So that is good. This I need to change back so it's no longer a cargo ship. And then I need to create some spawn groups that have both the Hornet drone and one of each of these drones so they can be spawned. Which should work fairly well. But I will do that at a later stage. Capac and I are in about 
five, ten minutes, going to start playing some Halo. So hang around if you're interested in coming along for that. And then this afternoon, big news, Capac and I are going to record some footage for Light Echoes. If you are not familiar with what Light Echoes is, uh, it's the first thing that Capac and I ever made. Uh, let me find the thing. Uh, not yet organized. There we go. Episode one. So, the very first... What the... The very first thing Capac and I ever made video-wise was Light Echoes. We'd... We'd never, um... Played any... Like, we'd never made videos before. This was the very first thing I edited. And we decided to make a story because Capac's a good writer and I kind of liked making, I like learning about editing. But two years ago, we released the 12th episode and we've been wanting to get back to it since then. And just finding time's been difficult. So, I decided that instead of continuing Seven Days to Die, I wanted to use that time to use to make more of this because I've learned so much about editing I learned so much about it all and we really 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 want to get back to this so that's the plan uh, no estimation date for when uh, any of it will be produced and at the moment my dream is finish season three and then remake this uh, because while I love the original season one I have to do a George Lucas and go back and make it better <laughs> because I've learned so much you can s if you find season one a bit difficult to get into watch season two first because you can actually do that um, season two I knew so much more about editing by that point and it is dramatically better uh, in terms of pacing and the way I did the audio around the conversations, all that sort of stuff. I should make this a bit quieter as I talk over it. Um, so that... <laughs> I won't go full George Lucas. I actually want to make it more interesting, not more slow and boring. <laughs> So, I was just using that as an example of going back to rework something old. Um, but I think there, given it was my very first ever video, there is so much I can improve. A big thing being my acting. My acting needs to improve. <laughs> yeah, more of a Ridley Scott. Yeah, sure. I'll take that, Demon Works. <laughs> Plus, it'd be great to do it in the modern graphics, because this was done in the DirectX 9 version. Codon. As mean as that is, it's true. It was pretty terrible. Uh, so... Yeah. That's my plan. But... I'm going to take a quick little break for five minutes, and I will be back with Halo and Capac shortly. So hopefully uh, some of you guys want to hang around. I'm going to stop the stream so that I can put this up on the Flipsy channel separately, and then I'll restart the stream in five, ten minutes when Capac and I are ready to go. So I'll see you all very shortly. Thanks for coming. And go watch some Light Echoes if you haven't. It'll explain so much of the references we make in Survival Unlikely.